I mean, anyone who's ever been on a night out with friends knows one of the most fun parts is just getting ready, right? For sure. It's like, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. That's the fun part. It's like <laughs> R&B the, play. Yeah. <laughs> the drink in the hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Guys, before we get into the video, I wanted to let you know that on the 23rd of January, there is a big free event happening that I am hosting live called The First Principles for Getting to Commitment. We have thousands of people already signed up. This is your chance to join us too if you haven't already. If you want commitment this year and you're struggling out there in dating or you're finding you keep coming across people who are casual or just keep you in limbo, who don't want the real thing, this is your chance to learn what you need to know to find it. It's going to be a really powerful event. You can join us for free by going to lovelifetraining.com. So head on over there now and we'll see you at that event. Now, let's get to the video. Welcome everybody to the Love Life podcast. I am Matthew Hussey. We are here with Audrey Hussey. Woo, my God. It still sounds weird every time I say it. <laughs> We've added a Hussey. And uh, Cassandra Saiti is here with us today yes. to have a conversation about style and our own personal wardrobe. We have known each other for years now. Yes. And I have always known you as the personal stylist in my life that I have never once benefited from. <laughs> Until very recently, I know you style people across the world. I know yes. you've been featured on lots of media and both online media and TV. And you're one of the best at what you do, but I have never actually worked with you until about a month and a half ago when Audrey and I both had the pleasure of getting styled by you for both our wedding and our honeymoon yes it was great it was the most fun yeah we had such a good time and it's been like a massive it's genuinely been a big shift for us in the way that we present ourselves the way that we enjoy dressing and choosing what to wear and it's like, you know how Marie Kondo used that phrase, spark joy, you yes, know, when yep. what, what sparks joy for you in your home. I would say that, that style has begun to spark joy for me in my life. And I think it's the same for you, Audrey. Yeah, for sure. It's been just a really fun process. And I, I, I feel like a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have had a lot of things to ask in this department because I wasn't focused on this department. And now that I've gotten more focused, it, I thought this would, this has had a profound effect on us. It would be great to take as many different learnings and insights from this experience and from you in the years of doing this, that people at home can apply yeah. to themselves, whether or not they ever have a stylist, everyone is like very few people in this life are above vanity <laughs> <laughs> and in a sense vanity is a superficial way of describing why we care because there is something fundamental that can change in our mindset when we decide to upgrade our wardrobe whether it's the quality of things we have whether it's just the consciousness that we go into our style with or just the pride that we take yep. in ourselves. To me, it's it's very similar to the pride we take in our body when we decide to take care of our body. It's just an extension yep. of that. So I guess my first question to you is, what do you see at a kind of ab a more meta level as being mm -hmm. the big benefit to people of upgrading their wardrobe and their sense of style? Yeah, great question. I So in my work with clients, I have seen so many incredible transformations throughout my six years of owning Next Level Wardrobe, and it has been so heartwarming to see. And I would say the biggest thing that stands out to me is the confidence level. 
and you have someone in your corner rooting for you when it comes to your style and how you present yourself to the world, saying, yes, that looks good. And yes, like you look amazing and kind of cheering you on. And when you get that and when you get the education behind great style, it's a winning combination. And people's confidence just goes like that. It's incredible to see. What does that education look like for, mm -hmm. for the everyday person who is just waking up today going, I have really let this part of my life go. I, you know, we obviously talk to an enormous number of people who want to find love. Part yep. of going out there and finding love is bringing our best to the table, not just in terms of our mindset or our energy, but in terms of the way we present ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a person that is going out there today going, I want to upgrade my my mindset in this area and the way I do it, but I really lack confidence, not just in myself, but in my choices. You know, we've dressed the same way for so long. I got used to, you know, back but when I left London over 10 years ago, I was wearing waistcoats and you know, nice trousers yeah. and button down shirts on every interview and everything I was doing. And then I came to Los Angeles and had no more opportunities to get dressed yes. because <laughs> I was working from home most of the time. It was sunny outside. It's not like yeah. walking through a chilly London where you put on layers and you can dress up easily. And everybody walks around in their tracksuits every single day. Yeah, everyone's in sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go for like thing. dinner at a Michelin star restaurant in your sweatpants. I mean, I, yes. you know, I don't know that that's true, but maybe I'm exaggerating, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm getting at. Yes. Why well, I, I think it was kind of summed up by a friend of ours who we just came back from a month in Japan and he, he lives in LA and uh -huh. he said, you know, I, uh, some restaurants wouldn't let me in in Japan because I was wearing sneakers all the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and he said, I was like very dressed down and wearing a cap and stuff like that. And I was like, oh yeah, you've been in LA so long that you, that for you, this is just your uniform at this stage. Yep. And I, I really enjoyed that because I enjoy being really comfortable, but it then got to a point where I was like, oh my God, I've now probably been doing this for years. Right. And I think in that time I lost a little confidence in like, well, what do I even, I don't even know what to go and choose. Mm -hmm. And I know Audrey had a similar experience of, you know, we would try to go shopping and you'd be like, I don't know what I like, or I don't know what if I'm going to step outside my comfort zone, I don't know what to buy. So what do you think about mm -hmm. that? Like when, when people have feel like, I, I don't even know what good style is. Yep. There's a, so much information out there. I'm drowning in it. I don't, you know, I read these, I look at these magazines and it's all like high fashion nonsense mm -hmm. that I'm not going to do for myself. Cause I just, it wouldn't feel right for me. Yep. Where do people even start with getting better style? Yeah, good question. And when I think back to all the hundreds of conversations that I've had with people, I would say that's one of the top three challenges that people have is the feeling of overwhelm. They just don't know where to start, who to trust, where to buy from, what to buy, and then it's in action at the end of the day. So I would say the first thing is to view clothing as a tool in your toolbox. And, you know, some people will some people will say, oh, it's just a pair of jeans or, oh, it's just like how you dress. It doesn't matter. Well, if that's true, then why are there so many negative emotions around clothing, mm -hmm. right? Why do you feel overwhelmed and don't do anything? Why do you buy the wrong things? Why do you feel frustrated when you can't get the right fit? And so I think if you start to reframe a little and say, hey, clothing and style is a tool that I have in my toolbox so I can feel confident every day. It's really powerful. Mm. And then you combine the tactics, right? A lot of style is actually mindset. Can you explain that to me? Yeah. So in my work with clients, I, yes, we focus on the tactics and stuff and doing the closet edit and shopping. But I have noticed that a lot of people have a lot of style rules for themselves and style is kind of like a language that you that you learn growing up right and then you form these rules and then you're like oh it has to be this way so if you approach it as okay it's a it's a skill I have to learn it's a language and it's going to evolve and change as I do as an individual too like you should not be wearing the same things that you were wearing when you were 20 you're in a different phase of life 
you're married now. And so your style should evolve as you do. And I think once you get those reframes, then it's really powerful, super powerful. Hey guys, for anyone who is watching this and wants to not simply watch my videos on YouTube, which I very much appreciate, but actually wants to come on a coaching journey with me to get results faster in your love life, I have a free event called Dating With Results that you can watch right now. In it, I show you the reasons we're struggling so much in love and I help you understand the practical things that you can start doing this week to find love faster. Come over to datingwithresults.com. You can watch this event for free. This is not a paid ticket event. It's just my way of giving you something practical and substantial that can help you exponentially in your love life if it's a priority for you right now. Go over to datingwithresults.com and I'll see you over there for this amazing event. I think one of the things I've been like, what's been interesting to me is I, firstly, I had ideas in my head from growing up about what goes with what, mm -hmm. like I always remember growing up being told you don't wear brown and black together. Oh. I was told that all dark blue and black. Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black. yeah. yeah it that doesn't, was like a it thing that go. you didn't wow. do. That's mm. fa false and false. Right. So yes. I grew yeah. up with that. So when yeah. I saw you putting colors like that together, I was like, does that go? Yeah, I, like I remember. That's not right, is it? And <laughs> you know, it, it, one of the things that was clear to me is you, it's kind of like anything else where there are certain basic tenets that are quite valuable to know. And one of the things that helped me was just even like going on the websites of the places we went to mm -hmm. and just seeing how they style their stuff because I would, I would be like, oh, those colors can go together. I, I would never have put those colors together. Yep. And I'd realized like my whole life. Has been a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when your parents tell you that, um, did your parents tell you this? My parents told me that it was illegal to turn on the lights in the back while they're driving in the car. Oh, I, I got that. My, oh, my really? parents yeah. told me that. Oh, they, they said, yeah, they said you're not allowed illegal. to do that. Yeah. I still feel like it's illegal. Yeah, really? It is illegal, isn't it? It's not illegal. No, it's a lie. It's a, it's a lie that our parents told James, us. James, is that illegal? My parents told me it was illegal. Did they really? Really? Yeah. I've never heard of that yeah. before. Wow. Well, Cass, you, you have, have irresponsible parents. parents. <laughs> I, but it's a bit like that, right? You're told. Were you given any rules, Cass? You're allowed to wear brown with black. You're allowed to put the light on in the middle of the car while it was driving. Oh my god! Yeah, just raised in the wild. Anyway, sorry to distract, but I, I thought it was you know similar. When I start to think about it, I, I watched you in action when you were styling mm -hmm. us, and you were like, "Oh, that actually looks pretty good with that." And I almost thought, like, sometimes you were surprised yourself to be like, "Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I yeah. would maybe go with that." Mm -hmm. And I realized it's kind of like anything else. Once you know certain rules, you can then improvise yep. and break certain rules because you have a confidence in what you're doing. And yes. I see that with celebrities all the time where I'm mm -hmm. like, they're wearing things and doing things that, and the, a magazine will be like, this is really cool because, yeah. and I can guarantee there would be somewhere else or some other time where they would be like, this is terrible because like, there's a sense in which there are rules and there's also a lot of making it up as you go along. Yes. Which could make it all sound like a farce. And in some ways I feel like fashion is because it's like, it's people with a lot of confidence telling the rest of us mm -hmm. what looks good. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of us, and then that we go, okay. Yeah. And that becomes style, Yeah, right? It has to come yeah. from somewhere. It starts from a few mm -hmm. confident people or a yeah. few thought leaders in that area going, no, 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 this is the thing now. And then we all go, oh, okay, this is the thing now. So I feel like there is a kind of, it's not even a criticism. I think it's just an observation yep. that there is a kind of farcical element to it in a way. But at the same time, it's a little bit like, I don't know, I don't want to get too heady, but it's like jazz, right? You, you need to know how to play certain chords and you need, but once you've got that, you then can improvise because yes. you know the basics. You That's can freestyle. That's a great analogy. Yeah, jazz. absolutely. And I would say that, yes, style is a skill. It's a language. And when I, so I always do closet edits and when I work with clients and they're very important because great style begins and ends with what is in a closet. And a closet tells me a lot about the person. What have your buying patterns been? What do you like to wear? What, you, what don't you like to wear? And in the closet, I can tell, you know, have they been putting effort towards this skill? 
do they really want to develop it? Because if not, the closet is bursting at the seams. There's stuff with tags on it still. And so great style always begins with the closet. And it's really important to remember that because the fashion magazines will say you need to buy this and you need to do this and wear this. But actually, if you get down to the basics, the basics is great style begins and ends with what is in your closet. When you say someone's closet is bursting at the seams, yep. what are like the top m mindsets or tips mm -hmm. that someone should go into editing their closet with when they're trying to like yep. dump half their closet? Yeah. What are the rules for what to dump and what not to dump? Yes. So... There's a lot of rules you can follow. I would say the top one, though, is you have to think of your closet as a special place, right? A lot of people kind of dismiss the closet. They'll have wire hangers or plastic from dry cleaning, old stuff just hanging out in there. And I really believe that if you treat your closet with respect then it can help you in this transformation. So for example, if you have plastic bags from dry cleaning, take it off. If you have mm. tags, take it off, right? Um, when you do an edit, if anything is old or worn or you, you open it or you hold it up and you're like, this is not me. Or I was in this different phase of life when I was wearing this, goodbye. It's, it's gonna be with someone else now mm. and make them happy. Because when you edit your closet, I truly, truly believe that you are kind of showing the universe that you are ready for the transformation. And it's really hard to to have that if you have all this baggage in your closet. What if people are coming at it from a kind of frugal place where mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I don't wanna get rid of that because I might need it or I might not yep. have the money to get new stuff. So, yeah. you know, how do I balance that out? What, what do you well, say to people who have stuffed closets yeah. but feel like they haven't got much disposable income or yep. any and are therefore afraid to throw things out or to donate them yeah i would say that you can still get strategic about your closet no matter the price point that you're working with so if you go into your closet everyone kind of knows those items that you were not wearing that you don't really like that don't fit so even if you put them to the side or put them in another place in your home so they're not in your day-to-day -day closet, that's a very powerful move, right? You don't have to donate them right away, but maybe in six mm. months time or three months time you revisit and you're like, do I like it? Is it me? Does it fit? And if Do not, I miss it? Yeah, do I miss it? Yeah, did most I even of, notice yeah. that it wasn't there for the last six months? Yeah, and most of the time I instruct my clients to do this, especially if they're going through body changes and stuff and most of the time they do not remember that one piece that they were agonizing over. It's yeah. kind of like a safety blanket in a way. So when you just put it to the side, it's powerful. If something is perfectly good, mm -hmm. like it's a, it's not a bad piece of clothing, yep. it's not unstylish, but you just never seem to put it on. Yep. Like I've got things still in my wardrobe that I realize you know, you kept them because you were like, well, they've been, th this is fine. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with this mm -hmm. and it could fit with your style. And, but I never reach for it. Is that something that ultimately should go or should yeah. it be kept for a time where I might start to revisit it? So my question is, why haven't you worn it? I don't know. It doesn't give me a good feeling. It doesn't make, <laughs> it doesn't like That's make good. me, That's like the, the stuff we bought together, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like now get excited about. I'm, yep. I look forward to wearing it. He gets so excited, by the way, that the other day we like, we cleaned everything uh -huh. and before basically like hung it up in the wardrobe and because he didn't have time before an interview to pick out the perfect outfit, he ended up wearing what he was wearing the day before because okay. he was like, I just, I just need to make the right choice. And I just, I feel rushed in making that decision because he likes it so much. I want to enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. And you didn't want to yeah. rush making that decision. I'm you the same way with food. Oh. I'm like, I don't want to eat now if I'm not going to like really order the best thing and yeah. enjoy it. I want to save it for another two. So I'll, I'll go like hungry for another three food. hours so that I can really enjoy my meal. <laughs> it was this, it was kind of the same mindset. It was. So I, yeah, there's stuff that I just, you know, how like certain objects, like they, yeah. there's like a, there's like a no, I don't mean this literally but there's like a smell that just wears off yeah there's a pull to them they don't know they're, yeah, not, yeah, they're yeah. like it's fade it, there's some attraction to them that's faded uh -huh. you don't feel it anymore uh -huh. it's like they've lost their glow and you don't know if they'll ever get it back again <laughs>
You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like the things we got together have a glow to me. Okay. And they're like, they ask to be worn. <laughs> and then there's these other things that I know are perfectly, they're, I, they're perfectly fine. Yes. They're probably some version of something I would end up buying a year from now. Yeah. <laughs> but I just don't feel it anymore. It doesn't yeah. spark joy. What do you do yeah. with those things? Well, I think, first of all, I think it's awesome that you did, you were open to the transformation. You did welcome these new things into your closet, right? Now, the fun part is for you that you get to have fun with your style and explore what you like to wear, what you don't like to wear, what what colors are you into, et cetera. So if anything in your closet does not spark joy, make you excited, I would donate it. Mm. It's time to move on because, again, going back, your closet is a very special place yeah. and we're treating it with respect now. It is. And life's too mm. short. Yes. To wear this, you know, T-shirt. This that doesn't perfectly make me feel fine T-shirt <laughs> that I've yeah. never worn. <laughs> life's too short. One of the things that I got from you was the importance of fit mm -hmm. and actually having things taken in or having things hemmed like trousers I don't think I ever got a pair of trousers hemmed in my life yeah because I just was so instant gratification because if, if I buy something I want to take it home now and enjoy it the idea of like I just got something I'm excited about and now I'm gonna get it hemmed because the trouser doesn't necessarily the length doesn't fit as well and did you feel like it had to fit you off the rack too I felt like Yes, I, oh, mm. for sure. I felt like mm -hmm. it's, if it doesn't fit me off the rack, then mm -hmm. what's the point? That was a big kind of paradigm shift for me. The idea of actually getting things um, fitted yep. properly. I suppose, firstly, I'd love for you to talk a, a little bit about that. Yeah. And then I have a follow-up question. Okay, great. Well, as we saw with your experience and even your experience, fit is so important. It literally can take a garment that looks 25% good to 110% good. It's that important. And so I think there's this, um, there's this rule out there that clothing should fit you off the rack, right? I believed it for long, and I worked in the fashion industry. And what I like to educate people on is that it's actually not meant to fit you. We all have different shapes and sizes and body types, and that's okay. But that's when we hire a very talented tailor to easily take up the hem or take up a sleeve. And it looks so much better. I mean, you saw it with your suiting, especially yeah, for huge. the wedding. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Huge. And actually, that doesn't cost that much money. Because when, when, I, when I discovered through you, you know, hemming things and kind mm -hmm. of having things taken in, I went on a bit of like a crazy rampage and kind of went through my wardrobe and just basically like took up all my jeans and did all these different things and actually you can find a really reasonable tailor yes. that just transforms a pair of trousers you never wear because they're too long and they just don't look good yeah. into something you wear all the time so yeah. it's a really good tip I think for sprucing up your wardrobe like we were talking about earlier like in order to instead of going out and buying that new pair of jeans you know can you try and have things kind of taken mm. in so that they fit you Again, yeah. and it's like new, yes. right? So there may be something in the closet that may be oversized or the hem is too long, but the simple act of taking it to a tailor and getting a very simple alteration of getting the hem, um, shortening the hem, super easy and it looks so much better. And then you keep it for a long time and you wear it for years mm. too. When you're doing that, how do you decide what, but what shape of your body are you gonna have it fitted to? Because mm. before our wedding, I was very, I was the slimmest I've been in a long time. <laughs> and well, I had a whole bunch of trousers fitted to that Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> and we then went to Italy for a week for our wedding. And there was a, a lot of pizza and pasta. And then we went to Japan and there was just a lot of everything. Yes. And we were there for a month. So we ate badly for a whole month. And I've come back and I told you, I was on stage with Nicola Pera for her book event. And I, I remember I put on the suit and I thought there's a possibility that when I sit down in this suit that my waist, like my pants explode. 
<laughs> did it? <laughs> no, but I like it. Cro- it like distracted me a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, this is this button could take out someone's eye in the audience. <laughs> Like, I really thought this is, I don't know. I'm really having to like suck in here. And it was because I'd tailored them for myself like a month and a bit before. Now that was good motivation to be like, okay, let's get back to the gym. Yes. But I suppose what you should you get stuff fitted for? Should you get it fitted for the average Mm. you or for the best body you? Or should you have things of different sizes so that you can ride up and down the scales yeah. <laughs> when you need to. Yeah, like different times of year. Yeah, yeah. like what yeah. should you do? I think, so I, listen, bodies change. It's very normal. And I, I wish people were a bit more gentle with themselves when it comes to their style because style is a reflection of your confidence, of your body, and body changes are normal. I would say like 90% of my clients have had body changes super normal, but it's important to have your style work with you, not against you. So if you are fluctuating in weights and sizes, like I've gained 20 pounds this year, I have different sizes in my wardrobe. And so some are in my day-to-day wardrobe, some are in another wardrobe, and I cycle them in and out. And it just kind of makes it more normal versus trying to squeeze into a pair of pants that's too tight or a jacket that's too tight. You want to feel comfortable in your clothing. Is that an argument for not going out? Like when you're, when you hit like, because a lot of people have this mindset, I'm going to hit my Mm. ideal shape, my ideal weight, and then I'm going to go and get a new wardrobe. Would you be a proponent for maybe spreading your purchases out a little bit more so that you don't have an entire new wardrobe that you've spent a fortune on that suits you only in one body shape that you have? Yeah, absolutely. So What I see a lot is people will go shopping, but they won't have a plan. So they'll get distracted by sales or promotions and they'll buy, buy, buy in hopes that it will fix that they don't have outfits to wear, they don't feel good. When if they had a plan from the beginning, like I'm an, I need a new black pair of trousers. That's what I'm going to buy today. They're focused on that and they do it. That makes your purchasing so much more confident versus like being distracted and stuff. Um, and ending up with a closet that you don't even really like either. Mm. So if you write down your list, I need trousers, I need tops, I need knits, then you have that list and you're you're so much more focused about what to buy, what colors you need, and you get more strategic and therefore more confident in your style. It also prevents you from, because those shop, uh, those retail assistants, they are like, good at what they do oh they so are you get good. in there and they They're like you look great yeah yeah <laughs> even though it doesn't fit you and it's like two sizes too small too big and you're like doesn't this is it good yeah. yeah you just really put it off yeah. you look great in this oversized <laughs> xxl pair yeah. of trousers that aren't fitting you. yeah yeah you come out with all these bags and you're like you're for based on everything you've bought you're like yeah. four different people yeah exactly because they've just somehow managed to get you to buy you know, half of the things in there. And yep. you're right, you because you didn't have a plan. You just yep. had someone telling you you looked amazing in everything that you put on. Yeah, and of course, if you if you don't have the style skills yet or the language and you go into a store and the retail assistant is like, you look incredible. Who doesn't like to be complimented, right? Mm. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to take that. But if you, that's why I say great style begins and ends with what is in your closet. Right. If you knew what you had, what was in there, if you knew your plan, then you could confidently walk in there and be like, no, I only need a black pair of trousers today. That's what I'm looking for. That's so relatable what Mm -hmm. you just said. I I really, really relate to the feeling of I need new clothes. Me and my friends always used to have this joke, which was, you know, we would go out and be like, let's wear jeans and a nice top. A nice top was like the joke because we were like, we never have any nice tops. We can never find anything uh-huh. to wear with our pair of jeans. And so we would go out and try and find nice tops. But like, how vague is that? You know, yeah. you don't even know what color, what style, what fit, anything. And so you end up, as you say, coming home with something that doesn't even fit the pair of jeans or doesn't go with the pair of jeans that you had planned to wear it with. So you don't wear that outfit, you wear a dress. And then you never wear that top again. Yeah. And it's, it just, that, that is so relatable to me. So having a plan, I find that so useful. And then you know what happens when you don't wear it, you feel bad about it. 
yeah. because you see it in your closet has a tag on it. You see it in there hanging and maybe once in a while you'll attempt to put an outfit together, right? But just it doesn't feel right. It doesn't look good. And no. it's a never ending cycle. And so you end that cycle by basically editing your closet and having a plan too. We should talk about when you came in and did a closet oh, edit yeah. for us. <laughs> I love closets. I could talk about closets all day. I love them. <laughs> we dumped so much stuff. I should say we donated it because we did, but it was just the pile of things yeah. that, and I think part of what was hard about that was that there were things that I had spent money on that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I was like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. I can't, this is actually like, I've got lots and lots of cheap items from over the years, but I was like, some of the things that I'm donating are things that I actually spent money mm -hmm. on that, you know, at the time I thought was a good idea. Maybe I didn't even wear it that much after yeah. I bought it. Someone told me it looked really great in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to then get rid of those things felt like the most unnatural thing in the world. Cause it was right. like, I can't psychologically part ways with this because I actually spent money on it. Yeah. But those, again, it was like strangely liberating to be like, yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't, yeah. it's not, it doesn't excite me. I'm never yeah. wearing it. It's just taking up space. And I'm a minimalist at heart. So is Audrey. So we, anything that feels kind of minimalist, mm -hmm. we really enjoy and we feel better and mm -hmm. our mind feels clear and it, anything that feels cluttered feels like something we just want to avoid. Yeah. And it's kind of like you say, it, your closet's a big part of your life because you it go is. in there multiple times a day, every day. If that's something yep. you just feel like avoiding, that's not a good thing. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. And usually people go to their closet at the start of their day too right mm. so if you're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and bored and all the negative emotions i typically hear about style and closets that's how you start out your day one of the things you said that stuck with me was it's okay to have space in your closet yes yeah how do you feel about that now i want to create more of it yeah, yeah all your stuff is on my side <laughs> that's because i'm clearing stuff out and i needed somewhere to put it just until the weekend i told you i needed until saturday <laughs> So it, it's unreasonable for you to be bringing this up right now. It's disingenuous. Because <laughs> you know, I if you were saying to people, pick five, if, if there were five things yep. that you could have in your closet and nothing else that mm -hmm. you know would be like, you can build everything out of these five things or these are the mm -hmm. five things you're going to need, excluding underwear and socks. Yep. Like these are things you're going to need over and over and over, over again. again. Yep. What would you, let's take women. What would you say to women are the five things yes. that you should have? Okay. First thing, t-shirts, great fitting t-shirts. So not gym shirts, not sleep shirts, like actual nice shirts you can put on if you're going out to dinner or into work. So number one. Colors? Num like what? Uh, so, you know, I'm big on my system, the NLW style system, which is a styling framework that focuses on the, the layers of a closet. So black, gray, white, and navy, because you're going to get the most outfits out okay. of those. Okay. So don't go. So if you've, if you're rebuilding your wardrobe right mm -hmm. now, don't mm -hmm. go out and buy a green t-shirt. No, don't buy a green one because you basically want the most bang for your buck right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to get that with those four colors. Now, that's not to say, oh, if I like pink or like to wear colors, I can't, I can't buy those. You can, you just need to invest in those four colors first. Okay. That should be your foundation. Yes. Okay. Foundation. So t-shirts. T-shirts. Number one. Number one, I would say sweaters. So lightweight sweaters. So here in LA, we can't wear super heavy sweaters. So a nice sweater is really good. Um, I would say- uh, Like is a sweater the like- when you say sweater, do you uh -huh. mean like a knit sweater yes, or do you sweater. mean, you know, the kinds of sweaters that we'd buy at a concert? Oh, like a like, sweatshirt. Like a merch. Yeah. That's, oh, oh, oh no. so a sweatshirt is what you call that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So sweater, you mean something above. A little more polished. Right. Okay. Yeah. A little more polished. So like a knitted. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing is a Cut, great Again, say, stay, stay within those colors. Yes. Okay. Same colors. Okay. All right. Great. Number three. three. A great pair of jeans. What color? Any of those core colors. Black, gray, white, navy. Which one if you were only going to get two? Blue. Blue, and then you want to do one dark and one light, so you have maximum versatility. One dark blue, one light blue. Yes. Done. Okay. Okay. All right, that was number three. Yep. 
four. Number four, I would do a great pair of trousers that are not denim. So like what Audrey has on today, those look great. Hmm. Because they look a little more elevated from a pair of jeans. Mm. And so they're appropriate if you're going out to um, dinner or you're traveling. But she can still wear them as she works from home. And actually, the reason I bought these is because you inspired me and gave me permission to buy trousers that were not just skinny jeans, which is what I always used to wear. I just used to wear jogging bottoms and skinny jeans. And you kind of said, actually, you can wear real trousers. And... Because we bought a couple of pairs together, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, these look really good on me and I feel really good in them. And then I was able, it was almost, the way I see it is like your mind expands and you give yourself permission yes. to try something new. Yes. Whereas I think we get so stuck in the way that we kind of think about our style. Mm-hmm. And that's what for me, you you know, that was one of the huge things. It was just giving me permission to try different styles, yeah. which was amazing. Oh, I'm mm. so happy to hear. Yeah, and you look great in them. Thank you. Too. Really good. So trousers was number four. Yes. Was it number four? Yeah, Yeah. I think it was. Number five is a layering piece. So a layering piece could be a cardigan. It could be a blazer. It could be anything of the sorts where if you have your t-shirt on, you're putting something over it to elevate it. Mm. And this is especially good if you work from home because maybe you have a Zoom call you want to be casual for, but then you're meeting someone for lunch, so you want to look a little more formal. You just pop it on, go. Done. And again, one of those four colors. Yes. What did you say? Black, navy, gray. Or white. Or white. Yes. How, because I was really uncomfortable initially doing like a monochromatic Mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. look yes. where you have different shades yeah. of the same color or the same shades of the same color and so on so i always felt safe contrasting mm-hmm. colors like i knew i can't go wrong if i put a white with a gray i can't go yeah. wrong if i put a uh you know a, a blue shirt with a dark jean uh-huh. or, but whenever i i just couldn't wrap my head around being confident enough to layer clothes that had similar colors or the okay. same color uh-huh. so what are are there any rules when uh-huh. it comes to that like mm-hmm. can you wear all the same color or if it's the same color do they need to be different textures mm. or do they need to be slightly different shades of the same color yeah. like are there any rules when it comes to having different shades of the same thing or a completely monochromatic look? Yeah, I would say, so you can pick one color. Like you're a good example today. So you're wearing navy today, but you're going light to dark. So that's kind of an easy thing to remember. Um, You also want to play with texture. So like your top is, it has some fine texture to it Mm. compared to the pants. So texture is kind of the key to elevate it and make it look interesting because a lot of people will say, I'm going to wear black and they'll wear kind of the same color of black. It doesn't have no character Mm. to it. It kind of looks flat. And so when you integrate that texture, it really makes it come alive. And so that's why when we went shopping, I was like, okay, what texture can I bring into the fitting room to kind of elevate the outfits? Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Can I just ask one question quickly about the monochrome? No, you may not yet. (laughs) Just because I like, okay. Some of the stuff we got for me is taup. Is that Uh, the right word? Taupe. Taupe. Yeah. Taupe. How do you say it? It's a French word, I think. Taupe. Taupe. Oh, is it French? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's the French okay. word for mole. Is that right? Top. Uh, I'm gonna look this I up. I should know this. <laughs> I think In it top, might be the uh, French word for mole because the word top comes from the color of a mole. I think. Oh, I've never heard this before. Yeah, I think. Uh, un top. How do I not remember this? This is when I realized it does, my doesn't it? Has faded. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Look at that little mole. Remember, it's oh. so cute. Yeah, because I think that's the color of a mole. Let's edit this bit out nope. and just have. No, nope. we just will have not. Go, it will yes, be yes. known that my yes, French yes. is better than Audrey's, <laughs> who is French. No, no, no. We're gonna edit this out. Definitely, we're not. We're gonna cut. <laughs> we're gonna cut this clip and put it online as just a single clip. Oh, yeah. If you're gonna wear top can you wear (laughs) if do you have to wear different shades of it or could you literally wear like 
the same trousers and the same color top? It depends. See, this is where there's kind of like an art and a science to style. It's a language, right? And so if you were wearing it to a formal event, maybe you could wear it all from head to toe. Maybe you're wearing it to a casual event and maybe you want to spice it up a little and go light to dark. So there's kind of like a nuance to style um, that you have to keep in mind. And we can talk about it more. Mm. After. I want to see the outfits you're referring to. Can you to. wear match it? Do you can you wear a blazer that doesn't go with those trousers? Like if you have a suit trouser, oh. you can wear mm -hmm. a different blazer that's not designed to go with those suit yeah, trousers. Yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. Oh, Audrey, you had a question, please. I do. I have a question. I think so. This is something that if I you'd think... like me to ask it in French for you, <laughs> I will. <laughs> but that's not going to make any sense because we edited that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so my question is, I think something that's very common for people mm -hmm. is, you know, giving in to comparison. So, you know, yes. you go on Instagram, right? Yep. And there's like a beautiful, probably AI generated woman who's wearing an amazing dress and you're like, oh, I want to look like that. So you order yeah. the dress and it comes and you don't feel like you look anything like the person who yeah, advertised it. Yeah. And as a result, I think it's very difficult for people to almost not get tempted to try and re re like recreate and replicate, I should say, styles that they see online that yes. aren't necessarily styles that will suit them. And I'm speaking from experience of this. Mm -hmm. And so how do you kind of not give in and what do you do about this kind of comparison? And how do you know what your style is and stay in yeah. your lane of the style that's actually going to make you feel good? Yeah, good question. I get this a lot mm -hmm. because I think for women, there's a lot of pressure to define your style. Yes. It's like it's something us women talk about. You see it in the magazines, you see it on Instagram. What is your style, right? Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I'm like, I want to be who I want to be when I want to be that person. And so I think one, you have to be very careful about who you follow mm. on Instagram. So I think at the same time you do a closet edit, you're doing an edit of the Instagram accounts. I love that. That you follow. Hmm. It's really important, right? Who you're learning from. And if you get ads, you mute them. Yeah. That's what I do. I mute ads that don't make me feel good. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I go, not interested, Instagram, thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the second thing I would say is, again, to get the system in place. Mm. Because with a system, you have those routines. And we're all going to fall off track. We may see an ad or we may see a magazine. We're tempted, right? But when you have a system in place you can fall back on it. Like if you get off track and you're like, okay, here's the goal. Here's what I need to do. Here's what I need to buy. And it makes you that much more confident as well. Mm. I yeah. like the five things that you gave and the colors to stick mm -hmm. within because that yes. in itself is a system. Yes. Someone, I feel like someone could leave this episode of the podcast and go, I'm going to see which of those five things I actually have in my wardrobe. Yes. And mm -hmm. do I have anything in each of those categories that does bring me joy that does excite me yeah. and if not those are the first things on my list and I'm going to get them in those colors and that creates what you, you, I know people in your profession call a capsule wardrobe yeah. yes right? yeah 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 absolutely and so yeah when you have the system in place you can buy confidently you can wear whatever you want whenever you want to right maybe some days you want to be boho or girly or whatever it is you have the elements in your closet to put outfits together and you just feel so much more like confident day to day because you know what your style is and you know what you're spending your money on what if you're you have the experience that I think Audrey and I quite regularly have in mm -hmm. LA, which is the kind of all dressed up and nowhere to go oh. feeling. Mm -hmm. Like we work from home. Our outing on a lot of days is just the coffee shop that's a three minute walk from the house. And then we come back home 20 minutes later uh -huh. and the rest of the day we're at home. So how, what do you say to, and but of course more people will be experiencing this than ever because more yeah. people are remote working than ever. So there is this, feel, it feels like there's this tension between uh, if I had somewhere to go, I'd enjoy getting dressed, mm -hmm. but I feel like I don't. And therefore it feels like there's never any reason to, and because there's never any reason to, I spend my life in sweatpants just because it feels like that's what's appropriate for me being yeah. around the house what do you say to that? Because I feel like that's 
I've had that feeling many times where mm-hmm. I'm like, I really want to put on a nice outfit. I'm not going anywhere. Like, yeah. it, do I just wear one around the house and just enjoy it and feel good around the house? Do I just do it for me? Like what, I, I'm so curious as to what you're going to say about this. Yeah, so with style, there's kind of two avenues um, in terms of where you are presenting yourself to, right? There's an the external world your coworkers, your partner, your colleagues, whatever that looks like. But then there's also the internal. And I don't think many people talk about this enough where it's like, I want to dress up because I want to dress up Mm -hmm. because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel confident. And maybe that doesn't look like five days a week you're dressing up for work from home, but maybe it's three days out of the week mm. or two days out of the week and taking baby steps into it. I know for myself in the pandemic, I did force myself to kind of dress up. Um, and I did notice that just kind of my productivity throughout the day was better. Mm. I felt better. If I had to run out and do an errand, I could and I didn't have to change 50 times, right? It was just kind of easy. And it's a nice thing to do for yourself. Yeah, there's something... There's something ritualistic Mm -hmm. about it. That feeling of you shower, you groom, you get ready. The act of getting ready. There's Mm -hmm. something about that. When you lose that, you lose something from your day. I mean, anyone who's ever been on a night out with friends knows one of the most fun parts is just getting ready right for sure it's like yeah. Yeah. oh yeah that's the fun part it's like <laughs> the r&b the, play yeah <laughs> the drink Takes in the hand yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely the pictures on the uh, on the digital camera yeah. that you take out to the club that's oh my funny. god good times but there's something there's something ritualistic about it yes and i think that when we're not when we're at home a lot especially those of us who work from home we are, we're missing that ritual without realizing that we're missing that ritual. Yes. And it's in some subtle way affecting our mindset. Absolutely. It, it, you know, I've heard um, Guy Ritchie, I think it was, said this, that for him, it really is like, he wears a suit a lot. Mm-hmm. And for him, he was like, my suit, it really is like my my armor for the day. You know, it really is like, that's that's what I put on to go and be ready yeah. for the day. And I, I really understand that feeling that it, I feel ready for the day in a different way by taking that time to do that. Even if it is, you know, I've, I think one of the hurdles I've had to get over is it might just be for me. I might not see anyone today, but there's still something about it for me. Yes. That makes a difference. And, and I think add into that if people need a reason add into that the fact that probably a lot of us working from home are doing zoom calls and you know i this is an interesting area because for me you know running a company Mm -hmm. i would i would have nowhere to go but home and you know i i like training and i do jujitsu and so a lot of the time i'm coming from that and throwing something on and Mm -hmm. And it's very easy just to slip into something comfortable because you're like, ah, oh, I've got 10 minutes till I have to do a meeting and so on. But I think that there's almost a, like I've started, and maybe I'm just getting older. And so I'm just getting a bit stuffier in certain ways. I don't know. But I've started to feel like it's disrespectful to the meeting mm. showing up in something that just isn't, that that doesn't, feel smart that doesn't I'm not saying it has to be formal but that just feels sloppy it feels like I'm I'm even setting the wrong tone for my staff right because I'm showing up in some like baggy hoodie and with my hair all over the place and it feels like I'm now setting that tone for everyone else too and there's something to me about showing up dressed to even a zoom meeting that makes me feel like I'm actually ready for business I'm Mm -hmm. taking this call seriously mm-hmm. um so even that i feel like is super Im- it, it can be important i don't want to yeah. say it's important for everyone because some yeah. days i want to be like you know mark zuckerberg in the social network where he's just like <laughs> show, showing up to the boardroom in a hoodie and sandals and he's like i can do this you yeah. know like it, it, i think it's hard to know which person you want to be in life yeah i really think this goes to the heart of what yeah. you, like you do because yeah. some you don't always know who you want to be in life sometimes right. you're like i really want to be that guy 
who doesn't care and enjoy not caring. And then other days I'm, I feel like, no, wait, no, I really want to care. It's respectful. It's professional. It makes me show up differently. It, and yeah. sometimes I think there's a battle between those two guys. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that battle that goes on internally for a lot of people? Yeah, I think it's very common because if you aren't going into an office or if you don't have a dinner on your calendar, it's like, why, why should I? right? Like, wh why should I put in the effort and all this stuff? But like I said, I think it's for you. And I think when you kind of reposition it in that way, where it's like, it's something nice I'm doing for myself, right? It's kind of like making your own coffee in the morning or these rituals that we all have in some way in the morning or throughout our day. And getting ready is one of those. And I think when you kind of reframe it, in that way, it makes it like, oh, this is something I enjoy to do. And it's great to enjoy stuff. What do you say to that? I know certain YouTubers who mm -hmm. are kind of devoted to the minimalist yeah. lifestyle mm -hmm. who have like three pairs of the exact same pants and like 10 black t-shirts mm -hmm. that they rotate. And it's they're like a cartoon character that yeah. never changes clothes. <laughs> it's like, this is my uniform i wear it all the time it means i am reducing my decision making to essentially yes. zero every single day yeah and that, that to them fits with the minimalist idea yes i that some part of that speaks to my heart mm -hmm. because i like that reduction of activation energy for getting dressed and just being able to go and put that on every day what what do you think of that as someone who it almost seems antithetical to what mm. you do I'm just curious as to what you make of that kind of yeah. lifestyle when it comes to clothes. You know, I like it because they have developed their own system, right? And I think great style is about a system. And so if their system is, let me just buy the same pant three times over, great. And it works for them, right? And so I can see how it cuts down the decision fatigue and all this stuff. And so they really focused on this is what I need and that's it. Um, they don't, it, it, to me, it doesn't seem like they enjoy style, right? They don't really want to learn about mm -hmm. it or anything. And that's okay too. But most of my clients, and I think both of you, like are interested in learning more like about fits and textures and all this stuff. So. Yeah, well, I think I, I almost see it as uh, equating to the way, you know, some people just aren't that interested in yeah. food. Yeah. They will just be, I, I'm, I eat the same thing every day because I just don't care. It's just fuel to me. Mm -hmm. I can't relate to that person. Some people don't like music. They're just like, yeah, I just not, that, I don't really care. I don't feel that much when I listen to music. I don't care. Like there are people that just don't, the flavor of things or the richness of things, yeah. it doesn't speak to them in a certain part of life. Right. And so I think that's what you're speaking to is that it just doesn't, for me, I like, I do, I go through whole phases of not mm -hmm. caring. And, mm -hmm. and then when someone like you comes along and gets me passionate about it again, I'm like, oh, I really do like the flavor of, of clothes. And yeah. I, you know, I like trying different things and it's fun. But it's, I'm wondering if you think those people lose out on something or they, even if they don't enjoy it, do you think there's any outward component of like it, it not hurts them in any way, but do you feel like there's, in some way it reduces their impact in life not to have more variety? Yeah, I think it's interesting you bring that up because I view all of us, whether we own our own business or not, like we are selling ourselves at the end of the day, right? Like you are your personal brand, you are, I am. And so I think if you think about it that way, it's like, okay, what do you want your personal brand to be? When people look at you, what do you want them to think about you? If they're going out on dates, right? That could be important as well. And so I don't know if they, they think they're necessarily losing out, but for myself, I can say like, I wanna style as a tool that I'm using in my toolbox and I wanna use it to my advantage. Hi guys, while you're here, I wanted to share something with you. My second book, Love Life, is available for pre-order right now. How to raise your standards, find your person and live happily no matter what. This has been the single hardest project I've done
done as a single piece of work is perhaps the proudest I've ever been of something I have created. I've poured myself personally into this book. I think you're gonna learn more about me than you've ever learned, even if you've been watching my YouTube videos for the last 15 years. And I think it's different from anything else out there. I think you could have read a hundred books on love and I don't think you will have ever read anything quite like this. It's available for pre-order right now at lovelifebook.com and I wanna urge you to pre-order it right now for a couple of reasons. One is that the more people pre-order, the more a book makes a splash. And the more this book makes a splash, the more we can use it to help more people. But the reason that you should pre-order for you is because I have put together some incredible bonuses for people who order at this early stage. And the earlier you pre-order, the more bonuses you get. This is my way of saying thank you to you for helping me get this book out there. So go over to lovelifebook.com and pre-order and you'll be on the list for every single one of those bonuses from this point forward. You know, it's so interesting you mentioned that because that was going to be my next question to mm -hmm. you because there's going to be so many people listening who are dating and they're going on multiple dates a week or, mm -hmm. you know, multiple dates a month. And they're going to have the experience that we've all had where you're literally looking at a wardrobe full of clothes with nothing to wear and you look rubbish and everything and you just literally feel despair every time you have to dress for anything. So yeah. do you have any advice for people in terms of how to you know, how to feel good and feel sexy and feel confident in clothes that they're wearing for dating? Yeah, yeah, great question. I would say it all comes back to a system, right? Because when I was dating, you know, you, you're you leading up to this moment and you're, you want to look your best and feel your best too. But if you go to your closet and you don't have the right pieces, you feel anxious, you don't feel confident. But on the other side, if you had a system, if you invested in the right pieces, had the right colors, you could easily put an outfit together. So in my opinion, 99% of people should be focusing on that because it bleeds into so many areas of your life. Mm. And also, don't forget accessories too, like makeup, jewelry, bag, shoes. Those are fun ways to kind of elevate a look too. And what about if you feel like your body, you know, we spoke a little bit earlier mm -hmm. about your body changing. And I know there's a lot of people who don't feel confident in their bodies. You know, maybe they are a few kilos more than they wish they were, um, you know, whatever it might be. How do you combat that in terms of if you feel like you want to feel sexy and attractive, but you don't feel like clothes really fit you and make you look that way? Yeah, yeah. I would say that's very common with the clients that we work with. And so it's just about getting creative around it right because it's not only about the clothes it's how you carry yourself mm. it's what you say there's also accessories and makeup and hairstyles that you can kind of experiment with so I would say if you have the system in place that kind of eases that anxiety but if you wanted to up it a little bit you could play with maybe instead of showing legs you show a collarbone or you show your arms, right? There's other ways to kind of be sexy yeah. without being traditionally sexy and showing more than maybe you were, you wanted to. So you can play with that. Yeah. What are the things people should, if they're gonna spend more money on something, mm -hmm. what should they, what should they be happy to buy cheap? And what should you not buy cheap? Mm. So in my opinion, anything that's fashion forward, trend driven by cheap go a lower price point because it's basically going to come in and out of your wardrobe you're going to probably lose interest in about six months so buy cheap those investment pieces like the white t-shirt or the navy pant that's where you want to invest more because you can create more outfits out of them and they're going to live with you mm. for longer mm -hmm. yeah the the that idea of cost per wear yes i think of all the time yes because anytime I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to wear this like a hundred times or 500 times mm -hmm. or, you know, over the next five years, it, I think we can have a tendency to be kind of short sighted about those things and not go, well, this is worth it because I am going to be wearing this for a long time or this is the kind of thing I'm going to be wearing every day. And as long as it's not the kind of thing that will you'll wear every day and it will wear out in a month. Yeah. In which case I always find those things 
that bugs me to spend a ton of money on. Yes, of because course. Because the stuff that just, you know, naturally just gets beat up and you're like, yeah. I can't wear it anymore. Yeah. But yeah, I think cost per wear has been a game changer for me in terms of deciding what to spend money on. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes it more approachable too, because sometimes it, it can be really nervous to spend money on clothing, right? You don't want to ruin it. You want it to last a long time. But when you break it down into, okay, if I wear this 10 times this year or 20 times, then it makes it a little more approachable, but also goes back again to the system because you need pieces to wear that piece with. So you have to make sure that you have all these pieces working together. Yeah, there's nothing worse than buying like a really expensive item and then realizing mm -hmm. it doesn't go with anything that you own. Yeah, I have yeah. one of those in my, in yeah. my wardrobe. Oh, you yeah. shouldn't have to buy a whole new wardrobe to cater to some expensive no. thing you just bought. Well, no. that's really interesting you say that because that was actually a question I wanted to ask you, uh -huh. Cassandra, is, you know, what do you do about the fact that when you go shopping, you are drawn to certain pieces? Yep. I don't know about you, but this happens to me all the time. I'm like, oh, this sparkling, <laughs> like, boiler suit <laughs> with diamante straps. Oh, my God, yes, I want to buy this. It speaks to, like, a younger me that yeah. somehow loved it. I don't know. But, you know, you'll, you'll find these pieces and you get very, very drawn to them. It might be, like, a really bright jacket or, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. How do you kind of cut your sort of bias towards these kinds of pieces and yeah. start actually gravitating towards the kinds of pieces you can pair with things in your wardrobe because that happens yeah. a lot you go out with the plan mm -hmm. but then you see this thing and you're like yeah. oh, this thing and then you come home with it and you haven't bought anything in your plan yeah. and you feel guilty well the retailers are doing a good job then if they're doing that <laughs> that's their whole purpose right is to tempt you and stuff but i think having the system in place and also formulating your style values Ooh. Right. Like no one has ever really thought about that, taking the time to like form them. Like, what are they for you? So, for example, um, in January, I don't buy clothes. I don't buy clothes because I'm like, I want to start my new year, like using what I have. And it's actually a really tempting time because mm. there's sales going on. Mm. So that's a value of mine. I don't buy new clothes in January and I use what I have. So I think Why if you, is that that you, what, what, what's because that I from? love my closet, why do I need more? I feel like I have enough. So you feel like it's almost by responding to the marketing in January, it's like you're, you're allowing someone else to tell you what your next move should be when yeah. in fact you actually already like what you have. So yeah. you don't need to be led by that. I don't like it. I love everything yeah. in my closet so when i'm like okay do i need this do i want this well i have a no rule no buy rule in january and it makes it very easy so i think formulating some style values and rules can help people keep on track what's your view of black friday mm, no not good sales are usually not a sale it's kind of padded in already into their margins and their plan so Sales happen for a reason. Because it's what? Because it's stuff people don't want? That. And they've basically, when they buy the goods, they pad in that they're going to have a sale into the retail price. So oh, it's so already... Oh, you're paying the proper yeah. price. You're yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... Oh, yeah. From an inflated price, they yes. bring it down to a normal price. Yes. And this is where my... Um, fashion industry experience comes into play because I worked in the fashion industry for over 25 years. So I know kind of the ins and outs and the behind the scenes of it. So I like to educate people on what really goes on behind the scenes because then they feel more confident when they go shopping and, and what they're buying too. Because now I have some nice things yes. that I have, feel I have to take care of. And also I now don't want to wear something wrinkled. Right, which I now distinctly remember a conversation I had with your husband, Ramit, uh -huh. <laughs> when we were having, he obviously specializes in finances and I was having a conversation. I don't know why, you know, Ramit will always get onto the conversation about t-shirts and wrinkles and ironing if he can. <laughs> and in this conversation, he, he absolutely just ripped me to shreds for the idea that I would wear something that I hadn't ironed. Uh -huh. previously uh -huh. so i and i happen to know that ramit is the one who does the ironing 
He is. In your household. He is, yes. <laughs> so what, before Rami, what did you do when you had wrinkled clothes? And you're not someone who, you, again, you care about your presentation. Yes. So yes. what did you do? Were you ironing your own clothes? I would pull out that iron with the biggest sad face <laughs> on iron and so, put it away. <laughs> so do you iron in advance? Do you iron like the week's outfits in advance or do you iron per outfit? Dep you're like, oh, this is what I'm going to wear today. I'll iron it. So I iron per outfit because um, I have a system in place so I can put outfits together in 60 seconds or less. So mm -hmm. it doesn't take me any time. And so to do a quick iron doesn't take any time, literally no time at all. What do you so. do? Oh, this is such, a, I can't believe 36 <laughs> year old me is asking this as a real question that I'm interested in. But I can't believe you just asked, what do you do if you really don't want to iron? <laughs> Well, what? get get a load of this question because I'm <laughs> about to deliver something really fucking spicy. Um, when you have trousers that have a pleat in them, okay, <laughs> and you want them to be nicely ironed, I get the impression some of the trousers I've got you're not supposed to iron because of the material, but maybe you are. I'm not sure. Do you steam them? But there's a pleat in them. A pleat, a steamer's not going to get a pleat in a trouser. Like, what do you do? Oh, like the ones you have on, Yeah, right? exactly. What would Stay you do? Stay tuned for some really interesting podcasting I know. We, well, maybe cut this because it's so boring. <laughs> yeah, that and the It's like the comment. most, this might be in any interview I've ever done. It honestly might be the most boring question I've ever asked in my this entire life. This is turning life. into Matt's Q&A for me about his Correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. I'm, I'm deeply, I am worried that this is the most boring thing I've ever asked. Anyone, not just you, Cassandra, anyone. No, I love it. I love but, it. I have but an these trousers uh -huh. are not like, I think an, a hot iron on these would ruin them. So. And, and I don't know if you could steam them because that's not going to keep the pleat in them. So what do you do? Do you have to send them off? That's expensive. No. So what do you it's do? It's how you iron them. Go on then. So what you want to do. <laughs> Go on, let's do it. We've done a podcast, podcast episode about how to iron. Dude, so we need uh, some BTS and B ironing. And it's for no. Matthew. <laughs> it's not, it's just it's for me. I think this is a very progressive episode. <laughs> <laughs> so go on okay so basically you're gonna pull the bottom of the pant i can actually show you it's easier if i show you you're yeah, gonna pull yeah, the bottom yeah. and then make it crisp yeah and then the pleats are on the side nice that's how you iron it you don't just throw the but, pant down and then iron it but do i have to put something between the pant and the iron so that the iron doesn't like burn the pant no so that would just be a temperature just thing turn down on the, the iron, iron. Yeah, yeah, turn down I'll the iron. Be, yeah. <laughs> turn down the iron. These are the hard hitting questions. Guys, so. we did it. We did it. Turn we down the iron. We can't finish here. Can't finish on that tone. Turn down the iron. What if turn down the iron was <laughs> some kind of grand metaphor for life? I feel like that was all the questions I had. So I'm really nervous now because you, you seem to worry that that's a bad place. To, I have to a one last question. Okay, let's do it. Um, I want to Is it talk... about ironing? It's not about ironing. Okay. Um, Steaming? I always hear of the importance, because as you say, accessorize, yeah. right? Yeah. And they can, you're right, they can bring so much confidence to an outfit. They can really yeah. make, you know, make everything pop. How do you decide what shoes to wear with what? Oh, good question. And how many pairs yeah. of shoes should you have in your wardrobe? How long do we have another three hours? <laughs> no, people get really confused around footwear and what bottoms to wear with footwear. Yes. And also you're kind of, I, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, but you can tell a lot about people from the shoes they wear. Yeah. Shoes are actually a kind of a gateway into someone's soul in a, yeah. in a way. I saw Jameson yeah. look down at his feet <laughs> when you said that. He's not even wearing shoes and it still made him <laughs> self-conscious. No, but I think, I think it's true. Socks. It is. I think it's true. So, yeah, like how do, you, how do you kind of choose a shoe that really reflects your personality and a shoe that's going to yeah. go with what you're wearing and make you feel confident? Yeah. So there's like clothing in a closet. There's basics that you need to have with shoes. Right. So the system is all dependent on your lifestyle and your preferences and stuff. But for example, like I recommend women to have like a sneaker, right? A daytime sneaker they can run around in. Another sneaker to go to the gym in because those are two separate things. 
Um, maybe it's a sandal, maybe it's a high heel. So you kind of identify what those key pieces are and then you invest in them. Mm -hmm. So the combinations of the bottom and the footwear is, it's so nuanced and stuff. But I think if you think of your shoes, your bags even, your jewelry as, okay, what are the essentials that I need? Invest in those first and then layer on the nice to haves from there. I love that. And actually Mm -hmm. I have one other question, Mm -hmm. still not about ironing, Um, but I have one other question, which is about, you know, you mentioned earlier, you said, you know, you're in a different phase of your life. You should be dressing differently. And I Mm -hmm. agree with you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I dress very differently now to when I was 15 Mm -hmm. or 25. But how do you, because, you know, I will say like sometimes my mom, for instance, as an example, she dresses very young and she'll wear like short dresses and, you know, she'll wear like tight jeans and, and she looks amazing. I mean, she just like looks youthful as a result Uh of that. But sometimes, you know, you it goes the other way right where you kind of wear you for clothing and you end up just looking like you're not wearing the right clothing for your age mm-hmm. so I think it's a bit of a minefield for women it's mindful for men yeah. too but especially for women because you're yeah. judged a lot by the way that you're presented yes and how do you make those decisions based on you know what age you're at yeah I think it's again having your style values mm. right Even creating a Pinterest board, I think, is really powerful because style is so visual. So you can say, I want to look feminine, but what does that mean? Right. And so it's not until you start assigning visuals where you're like, okay, this is what it could look like. So having the values, having the Pinterest board, maybe reading some bloggers or hiring a stylist like me is really powerful because then bring it to life for you from there and style evolves just like we do as human beings and so styles that were trendy five years ago are not anymore so that's the language of style coming in so sometimes you need someone to help decode it is there a trend right now that makes you want to throw up this 90s trend what what does it, what is that? Like the the like plastic. Choker. Yes. Okay. So I was born in the eighties. So I am a child of the nineties. So I can I can speak about this. The choke the plastic chokers. Maybe do you remember the baby shirts? The BB shirts. Did you mm, guys have? I them? do. With the rhinestones. I right. The like juicy the sweatsuits. Oh, I remember the juicy. I shouldn't. Yes. I don't. I mean, everyone remembers the juicy sweatsuits. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think Wait, that was do you in remember France that? when that was going on. I remember from the 90s, they I remember. They had Juicy across the butt, yes. right? Yes. And oh, they were those. in this yes. color, like oh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, hot pink and purple. Oh, and Jameson, stuff. you remember those. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Low rise pants yes. as well. Like the Britney All pants. Making a co- yes. And you don't, you're not a fan? I'm not into it. Maybe it's just a phase of life I'm in. I'm older now. I'm not going to the club. Yeah. Anymore. Are, the, are the juicy things coming back? I've seen them. Really? Yes. We can get you some for Christmas, babe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, I didn't. I wasn't wearing them myself. <laughs> Just observing. I, I, yeah. Right. <laughs> how um, dare you? Yeah, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would be your advice as a sign-off to people who are going away from this? Mm-hmm. And thinking, what are the what are the next three things I could do? If I actually want to make some progress this mm-hmm. week, if they're still feeling a little overwhelmed, what would be the three things you say they should do this week that could upgrade their style or their closet yeah. in a way that would give them greater confidence in themselves and greater impact in the world? I would say number one is to form a style vision. Like we've talked about, I think style can be a downer for a lot of people and it should not be. Like I truly believe everyone deserves to have great style, no matter your budget, your age, your size, everyone deserves it, but you have to form the vision. So we got to get you back to that place of fun. So the Pinterest board. So that's number one. I would say number two is really look at your closet and start to make baby steps with editing it so if there's one piece that has a tag on it still you haven't worn it in a year it's time to donate it it had a good life it's moving on now okay and then the third is change 
change the hangers in your closet. It's a very small thing to do, but it's so impactful because again, we're treating our closet with respect, Mm. right? And if you have the plastic from dry cleaning and the wire hangers, it just feels messy and chaotic. So I always recommend these velvet hangers on Amazon. They're cheap. You can buy them. They look so luxe and nice. It's like you're walking into a boutique Mm. every day. So I would say with those three things, you feel confident, you feel in charge of your style, not the other way around. And it becomes fun again, too. That's really cool. I love that. I And I feel like there's a lot of people that are actually going to go and do that. In fact, tag us, you know, put a picture and on what on Instagram of your wardrobe edit or the new hangers you've got something you a shift you've made or even just a pile of clothes that you're getting rid of yeah. take a picture of it and tag us and Cass uh, I am at the Matthew Hussey and Cass is at next level wardrobe on Instagram for those of you that are after a much more boutique experience Cass does personal styling at the highest level and it was an incredible experience for me and Audrey we enjoyed it so much everything from the wardrobe edit that we did that where you came over and dumped half of our wardrobe into a pile to donate (laughs) yeah no it was it was savage it was but it was amazing and the shopping part of it and going out and trying new things and it was such an amazing experience so if you are looking for something much more personalized from Cassandra, she is incredible at what she does. Go check that out. You can find the details at her Instagram account at Next Level Wardrobe. And also just go and follow Cass on Instagram because her, if you actually just look at her feed, there's all sorts of suggestions. And I, I love watching your stuff now because you're literally, you know, for both men and women, You'll show colors that go together. You'll show outfits that go together. You actually show in action what this system looks like and what that capsule wardrobe of having limited colors and certain staple things looks like. So if you're looking for a visual to go with all of the advice from today, go to Cass's Instagram because it's really, really good and practical. Uh, But Cassandra, Saiti, thank you so much for being here. It's such a pleasure. Is there anything else you want to tell people Uh, about where to find you or do you feel like that covers it yeah definitely follow us uh, at next level wardrobe and we do have an email list that has a freebie um, three pieces to have in your closet and we include brand suggestions as well so if they visit nextlevelwardrobe.com they can get that incredible thank you so much for joining us this was so much fun we have to do this again and email us questions you know send send an email to podcast at matthewhussey.com if you want to follow up episode on uh ironing and <laughs> and just different techniques and more detail obviously oh, well, now we're gonna have we're inundated with emails <laughs> oh, no. let us How know we're gonna Listen, through all people, of them. Can, people can vote with their emails and let us know <laughs> all right i think it's not gonna be as boring as as you're making it out to be <laughs> when people tell us the feedback Cassandra, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you.